everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's Wednesday morning. I wasn't supposed to have off till Saturday and Sunday, but we had a little shift in the schedules at work, so I ended up with today off. Uh, and with the weather being halfway decent, we're supposed to hit around 50 degrees. It, it is cold out. I've been outside short sleeved, um, moving stuff around. Um, but the uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. Winds, you know, 10, 5 to 10, so I think it'll be pretty good in the pit. Because um, as you can see, there's nothing here. There's nothing down here. And there's nothing in there but the stuff that normally lives in there. Yeah, you're going to get to see it. Here's what I'm working on today. I even got the fuzzy thing on the mic, so you're not going to hear the air. Here's what we're going to work on today. I don't really, I don't know how much I'm going to bring you guys in. Uh, I'm just going to kind of explain and I'll bring out and walk you through when I get all the marks set up. But, oh yeah, she's back together. She's got the wings back on her right now. What I'm going to do is come out and get everything set up so I know where to uh, have, the, have the start points. Let's see if we can work this. Where the start points and then the end points are going to be. For the wing burst the tail burst is not that big of a deal but when i get marks set up on the wings i want to kind of use that same angle on the tail in the same expansion rate i might have to increase a little bit more um, just to make the tail look better i've seen a couple different designs on the tail where they start right about here and they come up through here through the through the corner and then i've seen some where they come down low and i've seen some where they come up high now I've got a little bit of a little bit of dirt down here, so I think I'm going to bring mine low. And then what I'm going to do is I'll come back and figure out what the angle is going to be. I'm going to try to put that in from here out because it doesn't come through here on the tail. I think it comes through right about here through uh, on this side. Oops, sorry about that. On this side of the wire, that's where the uh, the flying wire is going to go through. It, I think it goes just from this side to about here. So that I'm going to have to uh, work on. But the main goal today was to get this thing, put the wings on it, put the cowling on it just to see how everything looks. And uh, she's a tank. <laughs> That's, uh, I've flown planes that are this heavy before. I've never owned one this heavy before. So let me stand outside while it's a little bit brighter still. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be... It's gonna, First flight's going to, I'm going to have to wear some Depends. All right, now this this was, just to bring you up to date on this, this is where we had, just because of the, the covering, pulled it on this side, pulled it on this side. This is where I'm going to have that little strip that's going to come out about a quarter inch. So from here to here, and it's just going to, it's just going to cover this gap. I could fly it fine with that gap. That's really not, it, it, it's not critical. I just want it to look better. Um, because that's what they did, uh, excuse me, that's what they did in real life. Uh, so anyway, the other thing I want to do too is when I get the windscreen put on, um, I, I'm going to, on this one, I, I don't know if I've still got it. Yeah, this isn't it. I don't know where this was from. Oh, I think this came up over the top. Uh, of the uh, yeah, this came up over the top uh, of the windscreen. I'm, I'm taking care of that. What I may do is I may once I get the windscreen on there, I may take some cardboard and try to figure out how to cut it at that radius, and then just use because uh, I'm using forty thousand uh, on the uh, um, forty thousandths of an inch for the uh, for the canopy, and I was going to use thirty thousandths on the doors and the side windows. Um, now I've got an option. I can either go with figure out what kind of angle it needs to be cut at and go with the uh, uh, 30 thousandths or I've got that stuff I, I may have showed it to you in an earlier video from a friend of mine Jim uh, that he just he just gave to me and it's almost it's more of a it's more of almost like a flexible vinyl clear and what I may do is I may make it out of that just something so that way I can once the once the windscreen is glued down or however I'm going to do it in the front it's something I can lay over the top so it's going to look like the uh, the aluminum on the real one but I, I should be able to paint it I'm hoping I should be able to paint it um, because that would be uh, 
that would be a better look anyway. And then I can just run some screws down so that way if anything does move around or I'll do a test and see if I can glue that to the, uh, to the, the PETG plastic. So once it was down there, I could lay everything out and do a little more of the canopy glue. If that'll bond the two pieces together, I can do that and then don't have to worry about putting backing screws or anything behind the, the front canopy. I can just uh, use some screws just to mount it at the bottom, uh, kind of like they do in real life. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a little idea for to me to bounce around inside this little head um, to see how I want to progress along with that one. So anyway. Let me go out, I'll get, some, uh, I'll get some little measurements and try to figure out how I wanna, I gotta look at some more pictures. I've got some pictures uh, on the, uh, I've got probably a half a dozen pictures that I can go off of. I just wanna find the ones that are, have the clearest view of about the uh, starting and the ending point um, for especially the wing burst because the tail I can, I can make it work because it's not, it doesn't have to be assembled for me to do it. So anyway, um, let me, uh, Sorry about that. There's a dog walking around outside. Let me uh, let me go on outside and uh, get things kind of sort of tentatively figured out. I'll probably just use little pieces of uh, tape just to mark the little dot corners. Um, so once I get that done, I'll bring it back out for a real quick one. And then I'm just going to go ahead and strip the wings off, strip everything down again. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. I, if I don't get if I don't get them painted today, they'll get painted on Sunday. So it might just be a, a busy day of uh, dinking around with the plane because that was almost in that was probably 35 minutes of setup time just to get that the wings put together because I had to reassemble the ailerons and everything. So anyway, I'll bring it back as soon as I get something accomplished. I promise I will. All right. All right. To the best of my abilities, battling the wind, you can kind of see it's going to be in between the masking tape. It's a, it's a really it's a really cruddy tape, and the wind will peel it off. So that's why I'm kind of up here, and I'm not going to jump. So, um, so I've got my marks set up. I'll bring it down close. What I did was up front. I'll bring it around front. For the front mark, I came out an equal distance. It was a uh, an, an inch and a quarter uh, from here, and then an inch and a quarter back from this point here. So this is where I triangulated out to here. So it's an inch and a quarter off this line, but it's also an inch and a quarter back. So I hopefully you can see that. Um, so I did that on both sides, and then by looking at some of the pictures. From this hinge point down to the bottom, this was about halfway through the open area, through the through the covered area. So it ends up coming out 14 and a half inches. Sorry about that. 14 and a half inches uh, from the inside, uh, whatever you want to call it, edge of the aileron. So there's a mark there. I've got a mark over there, and then over here, I'm just leaving about three eighths of an inch uh, to a half inch of uh, space here. So this is ready. I just got to tear it all apart. And these are ready to be once again torn down. Because I've, I've got to take everything apart. I've got to take this off because of where it's going to get painted. This will all be black up on the top. So these little these little cups on the inside will be about black. But what I want to do, I want to have the black only come down about halfway. So, so the way it's going to come across here, it's going to be angled, come down about halfway, halfway, and then halfway across this. Um, just so when it's being used, it looks pretty decent. So, in the hopes that everything will go well. So, that's about it. Once I get everything set up uh, and ready to spray, um, I'll bring it back in. It might not be today, it might be on Sunday, but I'll bring it back in. Good morning everyone, welcome back to the shop. It's Sunday morning, I think it's the 4th. Yeah, it's the 4th of March. Getting closer to springtime. That's all I gotta say about that. Alright, what I decided to do was bring this into picture, into view. I, I, I downloaded a, a, a three view drawing and I wanted to see how the lines were gonna work on here. This of course is a full wing, it's not clipped. 
So it's I was looking to see if I wanted to try to match the angle of the top uh, burst with the one on the tail on the horizontal stabilizer. I, I don't think I will. Um, looking at pictures of Margaret's real plane, uh, they, they were at a different angle, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and match that. Now, it's difficult because I don't have a really good... I didn't print two of these, I just printed one of them. So let's see if I can make this work. Alright, the hinge. The hinge is right about in this point here. It's not, it's not in the center. The way it was set up on this plane is that these hinges, it's, it's, instead of being, it's farther, let's just say it's farther this way than that way. Because on the real plane there's two big hinges and one like a half hinge or a smaller hinge on this end. Um, and these are all the same. So I'm just doing measurements to figure out, because I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm trying to find out where the burst should end on the aileron. And what I'm going to do is I took measurements of the aileron. Let me bring it back down again. Of the aileron from this point to this point. So I'm going between these ribs. And you can count the ribs. You can count the ribs on the wing here. So it, it so between this rib and this end rib is in inches 26 and a half. Here's where it gets goofy. On the drawing, because inches aren't going to work, it's too small. It's 39 and a half millimeters, and then the 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 hinge itself is at 14 and a half millimeters. So I'm just going to find the ratio of where this needs to be, and the metric, and then just uh, pretty much use it with the with the inches. So that way, it's going to give me the measurement I need to put the point at where the hinge is going to be, and that's going to give me an idea of where uh, I'm going to have to put the end point on the trailing edge of the aileron. So let me get that all set up. I'll bring it right back. Okay, here's what I measured out. That came out to be 37%. So there was 30% of the span out. Um, so it wasn't halfway. 37%. So what I did is I took the 26 uh, and a half. And then uh, when I did 37%, it came out to be 9.8 inches. See, 9.8 inches. So I came across here. And this point right here, you might be able to see it with the pencil, that's the 9.8 inches. I just rounded it down to 93 quarters. And then it's kind of hard to see it, but there's a dot about halfway uh, between this point and this point here. So I made a dot here, and then I came over, ran it all the way out. And this is just a little bit off, but it's, this, is not, this is not my masking tape. This is just me just trying to work to see what it's going to be like. Um, and it moved it in about two inches. It's not. It's not a lot, but it will make the it will make the burst a little bit fatter. All right, I've got the first one just on the top side. Everything is on, and all the lines are straight. And I'm hoping that everything will come out nicely. I'm hoping. So this is going to be the point. I've got to make sure that I burnish this in just before I spray it so I'm not pulling paint and letting it wick up front. I did that once on the uh, uh, my uh, clip wing cub when I did that one. But anyway, this is uh, ready to go. When I'm gonna come in, I gotta come in, I've gotta tape around, I've gotta run a bead of tape right around the edge of this thing halfway down, and then I'm gonna come inside here halfway down. And then this part here, I don't really have to go halfway down on this. I'm just going to come right underneath the edge of this little rim and because you can see where I cut it it's 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 not really wrapped over too well but I'm just going to come underneath here and just have it so it's just underneath it so that way all the rest of this stuff down inside there is still going to be orange this part the top of this will be black the top of this one will be black I've got to paint out the little boxes on the inside that'll be black and then this will be black this is going to come down probably about halfway on the face of the aileron, the leading edge of the aileron. It's going to come about halfway down the length of it, all the way across. So when you get a little bit of rotation, you're still going to see the black. At full rotation, it doesn't matter anyway. But I want to make it so it's not going to be where you're going to look down and see the orange. Um, I want to try to keep as much of that away. So that's, uh, yeah, 
that's about where that part's at. So I'll uh, let me get to work on that. I got to take the aileron off, and then uh, once I get all that taping done, I'll give you a quick little heads up before I take it into the spraying booth and uh, start shooting paint. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> got a boogie woogie. All right, I've got I've got black sprayed on. And I am really hoping that it's going to tack up nice. I can see there's a spot there I got to come in, so I got to shoot one more quick little buzz over the top of that. I'm just letting this kind of somewhat start to stick. Uh, and then I'll just uh, come in and touch you on up, and I'll bring it back when I start uh, unveiling. And hopefully, it'll be nothing but goodness. All right. Let us just hope for the best. Stage one is done. Okay, this part, this stripe is on and everything came out exactly the way I wanted it to where the top of these things are painted and that's just it. The sides are fine, the bottoms are fine and it goes all the way back to the, to the little trailing edge of the wing. All right, so that's good. That makes me happy. That's one down and several more to go. That What that's telling me is as of right now that the way that I'm doing it with the primer first then that paint second uh, is the way to go and uh, I'm handling the whole paint situation differently like I said is that it's two layers of paper really close to where the paint is so that way I've got two ways to block the solvents coming through and then with the masking tape it's the first little piece of masking tape it's probably about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths wide uh, that's on top of the paper that's touching the the paint on the plane and then I'm coming right on top of that with the second sheet of uh, paper, of masking paper, um, with a gap that's about ten thousandths to twenty thousandths of an inch. So I've got double coverage everywhere, and is I mean everything, everything came out great on that. I mean the lines, the lines are straight. That's the beautiful part about it. When all of a sudden you get everything lined up the way it's supposed to be. So we'll let that dry. It's still really, really on the shiny side. This stuff, even though it's gloss, it, it dries a little bit on the flatter side. I mean, not really. It's, it's more of a semi-gloss by the time it dries. All right, now this is already, I've already shot the, uh, the primer on it. So this one's ready for the black. I'm still going to have a little issue down in here with color. I'm going to, I'll just, if I have to go in with a paintbrush and some black spray paint, and just paint it on there I'll do it I don't care um, so this one's ready to go so I will uh, go ahead and spray it with the black and then this will be done and then uh, I'll bring this out 
with uh, with the other plane uh, when I bring you back in just to show you what that wing is going to tentatively look like because until it's until it's drier than I until I can handle it confidently I'm not going to reattach the aileron it's just going to be sitting on there just so you can see it because while this thing is drying uh, I'm going to go ahead sorry about that I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and get the other wing down and get that one prepped it's uh about two hours of prep time just to get the wing done and then it's you know five ten minutes of spray paint and then tear it all down and it's good to go so anyway um, yeah so far I'm pretty pretty happy so I'll I'll bring you back in uh, as soon as I get the uh, the aileron sprayed and dry to the point where I can handle it um, which is it's usually I mean this paint here I can touch it now and I sprayed that I don't know maybe 15 minutes ago so I'll uh, I'll get that sprayed as soon as I can I'll get it uncovered as soon as I can uh, touch it like that then I'll bring it on out and we'll set it up for you all right I have it out here and it, it's not screwed in yet so you're not going to get the 100% view as you can see this is starting to dry and it's it's not as shiny as this because this down here is still real wet so as it dries it's going to get closer to that which is fine that's kind of what i want anyway so let me just kind of it's going to look about like this from the top when it's all attached so so this burst is sprayed so what i'll do in here I'll get seen that that's going to be sitting out there for you know a couple hours before I'm ready to handle it and move it around. Um, I can uh, it, it might be ready for me to put the screws back in because I'd like to get these things back upstairs. That way it's it's a better more climate control temperature where down here it fluctuates between you know whenever I warm it up and whatever the temperature is outside. So all right, let me uh, let me set you back up here in the stand. And uh, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things go with the next one. Hopefully, it's it's going to continue with the thumbs up. So I'll bring it back if I got something else to show you. All right, as you can see, there's nothing there, and there's nothing in here. Here's the big surprise. It's outside. Now, I don't have the wing struts in, so the wings are kind of dropped down because they're supposed to be even across, and right now they're not. I'm just having battling trying to see through the camera here. But anyway, everything is all done. Uh, it's good to go. Got everything painted up. Everything came out nice. I'm happy. That was uh, about three hours per wing. That was six hours. It started at 8.30 this morning, finished at 2.30 this afternoon just for the wings. It came, to, it came to, to all the tape work that I had to do up inside here, up underneath. You can't see underneath. It's all the stuff I had to do to get everything taped off, but it came out very nicely. I'm, I'm very happy with it. So the next thing to do is the tail. And because it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I know what it's going to take to do the tail, I just decided that uh, that's going to be uh, next weekend. As of right now, I got Saturday and Sunday off, so that will be, uh, that'll be Saturday and Sunday, but uh, it's, that makes me proud. I just, it's, it's getting close. So once I get the tail done, I, I'll get the tail done on, uh, on Saturday. I want to get the flying wires done. Uh, that might be on Saturday as well, but most likely Sunday. And then I've got to get the back to work on the uh, uh, the windscreen, because um, that's the last that's the last big hurdle uh, to the plane. And then it's just a matter of at that point, um, all the little teeny the little teeny things I've got to do is I mean that's that's really nothing else after that. It's just to make sure the CG is right. So I've got to get the batteries mounted. So I'll make a mounting plate for the battery, but that's going to be where the battery, where the extra weight needs to be. Because as of right now, we're sitting pretty good on the CG, and that's with no batteries in it. So uh, once I get the flying wires on the tail, if it needed to be uh, a little bit heavier up in the front, I'll just move the batteries farther forward. The other thing I can do is because I took one... I took one of these out of the tail. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the 
basically it's just one of the springs for the tail uh, because you don't need that much weight back there so it's uh so this so i didn't need this so i took this out and that's probably saving at least a half ounce of weight so that's about three ounces up in the nose of weight so um you know you got to keep making try to keep it as light as possible i want to keep it under 30 because at 30 pounds it's 28 ounces per square foot and that's actually a darn low weight for a plane that size so so anyway i'm gonna put you back up in the stand get my stuff cleaned up get the uh get the wings back upstairs in the living room and uh we'll call it a day so i'll see you guys next time on back down in the shop